Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. I'm Chris from RMS Titanic Designs and today I want to explore one of my favourite photographs with you. It's probably one of the most famous, if not interesting photographs taken on board Titanic. It's part of the series of photographs taken on board Titanic by Father Francis Brown and this one is of the first class dining room on D-Deck. Francis Brown was an Irish priest that was gifted a maiden voyage first class ticket on board Titanic from his uncle. Just a quick voyage from Southampton to Cherbourg, France, and then disembarking Cork, Ireland, then known as Queenstown. He excitedly travelled from Ireland to Southampton via Liverpool and London, and then boarded the Titanic in Southampton on the 10th of April 1912, and was booked into cabin A37 on the promenade deck. Francis Brown was a keen photographer and took his camera along to take plenty of photographs. He took several photographs documenting his experience. He was also risky, taking photographs of the wireless room and other people's cabins. He also took photographs that captured everyday life on board, like mail and cargo being loaded, Irish women selling lace, and deck games. But the most interesting is of the first class dining room in full service. During his voyage on Titanic, Brown befriended an American millionaire couple. They very kindly offered to pay his full way to New York and back in return for Brown to spend the voyage to New York in their company. Brown telegraphed his superior requesting permission, but the reply was, GET OFF THAT SHIP in capital letters. Maybe he knew something. Modelling the first class dining room, I realised how beautiful this room was, with its white paint and jacobean detail and its huge size. It's the small details that make this room so special. The delicate mouldings reflecting light and its beautiful carved ceilings. The big tables and wide chairs which are set out more like a restaurant than a ship saloon. All meant to make the passenger feel they have plenty of space rather than being crammed in for their meal times. The room does get a lot of criticism from people today compared to other liners dining rooms. But drawing this room, I've definitely grown an appreciation towards it. So on the morning of 11th of April, Titanic pulled into Queenstown and Brown prepared to disembark Titanic shortly after breakfast. And this is when he took this photograph, through the first class breakfast service on 11th of April 1912. It's such an unusual photograph, as there are no known photographs taken like this, even on Olympic. All photographs that are even a bit similar are posed for brochures. Even in second class, passengers were modelling and posing for the press. It was not proper etiquette to just pull out your camera and start taking photographs as people were eating or in a public room. It was quite rude and taboo for the day. Bram must have felt that this room was definitely an image he wanted to capture or even he wanted to remember his last meal on board Titanic. He was definitely a brave photographer and probably felt like he had nothing to lose as he was already disembarking that day. Either way, he's beautifully captured the room and life on board Titanic as natural as it was. Showing passengers arriving and being seated for breakfast, stewards showing passengers to their tables, and passengers talking, and tables beautifully laid out awaiting passengers. You can almost hear the sound of passengers murmuring and plates clattering. This photograph provided historians new information about the bulkhead wall between the reception room and the dining room. On Olympic, the bulkhead had five arched windows looking through to both rooms but the photograph shows a modification that shows three larger arches instead. Without this one photograph, historians would have presumed Titanic to have been identical to Olympic and not really given much thought to it. It's still unknown why this modification was installed, but probably to make both rooms feel bigger, lighter and for passengers to see who's coming in and out of the room. It could also be as simple as having stewards able to see if any important passengers are arriving to clear the way and prepare for their tables. You may notice that it's not the clearest photographs of Brown's. Not like some of his other images, it's blurry, out of focus, and there's a lot of movement. Most of which are the passengers, which you are going to get with an unstaged photograph. But it's a weird blur at the bottom and strange light flares. So what's going on? We could say that this photo was taken in a rush, and Brown hadn't input the correct settings to his camera but it wouldn't explain the mysterious light patterns. We have to look at where we are in the dining room and where possibly Father Brown was sitting. The photo position is starboard on the back of the room facing forward. If you line up the columns with what we see in the photograph, adding more lines, matching points in the photograph, and eventually all the lines point to one particular spot on the plan. Actually, they point to one particular chair on the plans. 
I can confidently say he sat here, on one of the round tables with the column in the centre. This is very likely where Brown had sat for breakfast that morning. If not, then the chair opposite, but the column would have been in the way, and you can't see any chairs in the table in the photo. These tables were ideal for the single passenger, big enough with a centre column so you didn't have to have a conversation with the whole table, but instead just the people sat next to you, taking away the awkwardness of being seated on a smaller table opposite someone you didn't even know. It was actually etiquette at the time to speak to the person sat next to you rather than the person opposite, especially in an acquaintance setting. So we know where he was sitting. What about his camera? His camera was a 1912 vest pocket Kodak camera. These were the top of photography technology at the time and made photography easy for any amateur photographer. These cameras sold very well and paved the way for personal cameras that we know today. I decided to buy one. I wanted to see how Brown took his photographs and see how quick he could take it given the environment. And here it is. This is a genuine Kodak vest pocket camera that would have been exactly the same as Brown's. I'm first surprised how small and light it is. It truly would fit in your vest pocket. It's a beautiful camera and I can see why Brown was so fond of it. The camera has different light settings on the front to change the aperture. Clouds, marine view, distant view. And the front pulls out to extend the lens. You can see the image you're trying to take through the viewfinder. And to take the photograph you simply click the button here. So with the camera I can see how Brown took this particular dining room photo. The photo is taken quite high. It's higher than eye level as you can see the tops of the tables. So this must mean Brown held the camera possibly above his head which the camera would be upside down so he can still see through the viewfinder. This means the button to take the photograph is now at the top of the camera and away from you. Holding the camera in both hands, looking up and reaching round to click the button has put his hands in an awkward position. So on taking this photograph, the light reflection from his hand has been accidentally captured on this photograph, which you can see at the bottom of the photo. Other blurs I put down to the camera not being stable being above his head at the moment he clicked the button. This photograph was taken very fast and probably was a spare of the moment opportunity photo. Nobody is eating and the tables are still set with breakfast starting at 8am it could be safe to say it's around that time. Either way this photo tells us so much and captures a small glimpse into the fateful voyage. It's a wonderful photograph that tells a story of not just the Titanic but of every single person in this photo and of Brown himself showing his love for the ship his emotion towards leaving, and his playful opportunist personality. His photographs are such an important document to the Titanic voyage, and it's a miracle they even exist. If his superior never told him to return, all these could have been lost, and indeed, other keen photographer photographs were probably lost in the disaster. That's what makes Brown's photographs so valuable, and even 110 years later, providing new information about the Titanic. So tell me which photographs of Browns is your favourite in the comment box below. And be sure to check out my Instagram at rmstitanic.design for future posts. So thanks for watching guys. Like and subscribe if you want me to make some more videos. Thanks for watching. Bye.